Up next, Shalaka Karup, who's on her way. Here we go. She is a PhD student and rice aficionado, of course. She was also right to ask. She was asked to write her own bio. Oh. She's also a three-time Oscar nominee. <laughs> Did you really let them write this themselves? <laughs> and the youngest person to scale the dizzy, dizzying heights of Melk? <laughs> One-handed. <laughs> Your hands together for Shalaka. I'm Shalaka, and I'm going to be looking at romance in 21st century England. Now, like any marvelous body of research, this came from a very personal place. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, a few years ago, I found myself painfully single. Um, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Was it my personality? I, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> my social skills? Probably not. Um, and my appearance? Wrong. Fake news. Um, <laughs> so, I spent a lot of time thinking about this until I realized that the answer was staring me right in the face. Nothing. <laughs> this had absolutely nothing to do with me or anything about me. This was a global phenomenon. <laughs> now, here are a few quick facts. One out of three homes in the EU contain only one person, a single person. Globally, marriage is on the down low, divorce is on the rise, there are more single people in the world than there ever were before. So what's happening? What sort of disastrous event could have caused so many people to be the single in this day and age? The Black Death. <laughs> the 14th century allegedly Iraq produced plague that killed about two-thirds of Europe's population. So what does this have to do with romance in the 21st century? Firstly, autoimmune diseases. So, Europeans as a population are, are a lot more susceptible to autoimmune diseases than any other population in the world. Now, a hyperactive immune response when you've got seizures, cramps, a fever, you're dying a little bit, that's a good thing. It means your body's trying, right? <laughs> However, that sort of response in this modern sanitary nightmare of a society that we currently live in, it's not adaptive. How are you supposed to reproduce with somebody if their own body is trying to kill them every single day? More importantly, how are you supposed to have a desire to reproduce with somebody if they spend most of their lives using the phrase gluten-free? <laughs> it's not sexy. <laughs> we all know that genetic variability is a good thing. It means increased adaptability to changing environments, a stronger population as a whole. It's great. However, following the Black Death, England specifically became a lot less genetically diverse. England was actually more genetically diverse in the 11th century than it is right now in the 21st century. So if you spend a lot of time worrying about why your date won't go out with you, it's probably because they're super woke. They've assessed your coefficient of relatedness and decided that it's just not worth the risk. <laughs> Next time, find somebody who looks a little less like you. <laughs> so. Following the Black Death, because of the drastic reduction in the workforce, because of death, um, <laughs> wages went up, beer became cheaper, and society scrambled together to come up with some sort of solution for people to be able to drink more. Pubs were born. Um, now, as you rejoice, hold that beer close to your chest, because it's the only thing you're going to be holding on to for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, we all know that alcohol increases sexual desire. Fabulous, very conducive to relationships, romance, and reproduction. Alcohol, however, doesn't help with sexual performance. Alcohol is not conducive to reproducing. Do you spend a lot of your time wondering why you're wasting all of your time on calories and having unproductive sex? It's your alcohol problem that's at fault. <laughs> Do you wonder why you can't keep a man the minute the two of you are sober? Again, it's your alcohol problem. <laughs> Finally, sexy Latin. <laughs> People weren't the only things that died after the Black Death. Latin did too. <laughs> Due to the uptake of English, your chance of having romantic messages like this, it's dead. <laughs> now you get texts like this. <laughs> no romance whatsoever. 
Also historically, Latin has always been the language of the rich and the powerful. Do you spend most of your life wandering around judging your peers as low resource losers? It's because they are. They all speak English. You know what's sexy? You know what's powerful? Romantic languages. French, Italian, Enrique. Sexy. <laughs> It's not all hopeless. I know I've painted a very dire picture, but we have hope. There, there is a way to move forward past this. So science is working on autoimmune diseases. Good, good job, science. Um, we can work on genetic diversity, for example. How do you improve genetic variability? There is um, genetic drift, which we don't have control over. Um, there's inbreeding, which is ill-advised. <laughs> Then there's outbreeding and migration. However, those ideas aren't very popular in the UK right now. Um, so we have to look at something else. What we do is we eradicate the nuisance that is pub culture. How do we do this? A small spoon of nuclear waste in everybody's pint glasses. Once you've taught an entire population to stop drinking, your reproductive success is gonna be on track within a generation or two. Also, people will be more likely to accurately identify their soulmates if they're doing it while they're sober. <laughs> You've got a few bonuses as well. People who consume a dirty pint are probably gonna develop some sort of medical condition. We all know that medical terms have sexy Latin origins. <laughs> You've got the sexual appeal of Latin going for you. Also, genetic variability. The chance of getting a mutated human from the consumption of a dirty pint. <laughs> You've improved genetic variability without angering the general British public. Win, win, win. <laughs> so next time you're alone on a Saturday night and you think to yourself, rats. In the interest of science, I have to let you know that the Black Death were probably most likely produced by fleas and lice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Like I should say something as a medical historian. It's just mind-boggling what you've just said. Um, I, the, the first thing that comes to mind with the Black Death is, is uh, the plague masks um, that, that doctors used to wear, these beaked masks to protect them. Uh, is there a question in this? Like, is there, what would people wear to, what could people wear to signify that they're aware that this is what's happening and they're protecting themselves from it so you can identify other people romantically that, you know, you would want to connect up with because they, because they believe in this? Um, so traditionally, if we look at um, historically what people wear to raise awareness, I, in a historical context, it's always been some sort of ribbon. Um, <laughs> however, I, I, that's a bit contrite, and <laughs> it's not really original. Um, I think the best way to raise awareness is to have the issue staring at people straight in the face. Um, this may sound grotesque, but it's important that we raise awareness. So I, I, th I think the, the dead body, <laughs> hear me out, <laughs> the, the dead decomposing body of a tiny rat on a pin on everybody's lapels. <laughs> that way you're all in agreement that this, this is an epidemic and you're not afraid to talk about it. I, you have made the plague masks. Aren't the, the plague masks kind of hot? <laughs> Everything's hot depending on your perspective. We don't judge here at Barfest. We <laughs> hypothesize. You, you touched briefly on Brexit. Mm -hmm. um, have you made predictions based on that of, of how long we have in the UK until we're all humans are just wiped out because there's no, no migration into the country? Um, well, actually, there's a, there's a paper on this. According to the recent findings, um, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, Kappa Garland Jacobs, um, according to that paper, I, I can estimate um, with certainty about three and a half years, three years, four months. I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Black Eyes Man.